So I've been thinking about this pretty deeply for the past few months. In fact, I started thinking about it since kind of like the rise of generative AI, especially in late 2022 and early 2023, when the really popular ChatGPT came about and it was revolutionary. By the way, I just want to say something. I have come to a revelation and I'll share my concluding thoughts towards the end of the video, which I thought was so interesting, especially in this new world that we're living in. So a little bit of a little bit of history, like how I come to this thinking. Firstly, firstly, first of all, all right. So when generative AI came about, it was revolutionary. In some sense, it was disruptive because it's like what took really long to analyze. For example, you have a firewall locks, antivirus locks, operating system locks, cloud locks, whatever, right? It took a security engineer, security analyst, maybe a whole day just to be able to pinpoint whether this is a false positive or it's a real security incident. Sometimes even days. And sometimes even after the triage and the investigation, guess what? The response is completely the opposite of what is going on. And I have kept my silence, all right? I've been really quiet since like this Gen AI services came about and the job market is kind of being disrupted right now. Until recently, I've decided to share some interesting points around it, which is in this video. Now, the first part I wanna share is that generative AI is here. And I know they're kind of two spectrums, right? There are two extreme ends of what people think about what's going on. The first one is that people are saying, hey, there's an AI bubble. There's overinvestment on AI. That we are spending too much money on it and it seems like there isn't a real return on investment. And then on the other hand, they're saying that, hey, AI is here to take over our jobs. And what I want to say is that they're both right. They're both equally right. And here's my thoughts. The very first one about AI being a bubble, I think not. What has happened this past three years or so has been an exponential growth of generative AI services. And it is still growing, but it's not going to be growing like how it once was. So imagine if you're growing at like say, a thousand percent, two thousand percent, and now you're gonna grow at maybe a hundred percent, two hundred percent, but you're still growing, you're still faster than any other sectors and domains within tech or even within the broader market. Then what about job replacement? All right. I would say there is truth to it. And the reason why I've decided to put a video on this is because the past few months, I've seen a huge shift in the industry. So what do I mean by that? So initially, when generative AI services came about, a lot of it had to deal with more business use cases. All right, so for example, a chat bot that could help answer a customer query or an enterprise search that is powered by AI where they could connect to some of the backend data sources and provide faster response across a, an array of like data sources. 
Why I've decided to publish this video this time around is because I've been trying out something called Agentic AI. You would have seen a ton of videos on it, all right? To put it simply, instead of you talking to a generative AI service, they give you some response, give you some answers. This time around is a little different. You ask a question, you drop a prompt, or you can even ask it to do things for you, and it has agency to do it. You say, hey, help me book a flight ticket, help me book a hotel. The AI can now go to those websites, book it for you. They can log in, punch in your credit card number, click submit, find the cheapest price, whatever. And I have used it for security use cases. What I mean? Think about what's happening in the security world. You have security analysts, security engineers, you have people who are here to review identity access management, who can do one and so on and so forth. A lot of those can now be automated by AI agents. You can develop these agents, give them specialized tasks, say, review a person's identity and their permissions and see if there is a gap. You can say, help me remediate a misconfiguration on a website. You can tell it to tighten permissions, tighten configurations. You can tell it to triage across different multiple log sources. Correlate all of that together, give you a report, and even ask you, do you want to patch it? Do you want to place a virtual patch? You answer yes, boom. Give it a few seconds, a few minutes. It goes right in, run the tasks, done, clean. And this is the world that we're living in right now. So what does it mean for the job market then? There are a few ways to look at it. I want you to look at it positively. Okay, I want you to look at it positively because there are opportunities and there are also threats in the market. The threat is that if you continue doing what you've been doing, running queries against logs, evidence gathering, logging in, doing things manually, you're most likely going to get replaced by the AI agents. All right, I am upfront, I'm honest, I'm direct. The second part is the most important part for you and for me, which are the opportunities. What are the opportunities? The opportunities is to be able to deploy AI agents to do these tasks, to be able to develop MCP servers that can then help connect to all these tools and be able to manage all of these AI agents, operationalize them, help the companies run more automation, speed up investigation, speed up triage, speed up containment and remediation. That is the opportunity. Go and learn it. So what does it mean? My prediction is that if you are coming fresh out of school or if you're still in school, go and learn about operationalizing AI agents. It's compulsory. It's game changing. You have to learn it to keep yourself relevant on top of everything else that you're doing. Okay. You cannot say, oh, you know what? I'm just going to learn just AI agents and then I forget about how to do firewall lock analysis, I forget how to do threat detection and so on and so forth. All those are foundation knowledge that you have to learn 
But now that you have learned them, you want to build AI agents on top of it to help you automate those tasks. That's the opportunity. All right. If you can do that, you will stay employable. If you are already in the industry, you have to learn to bring in AI agents to do what took you eight or nine hours. You have to think of ways of compressing those with the introduction of AI agents. You cannot escape it. It has to be done. Now, what if you say, hey, I don't have the resources, I don't have the time to go and learn all this stuff, right? I had this super interesting idea that I told you about as part of my concluding thoughts is my revelation. I saw this news article the other day that ransomware gangs have retired because they make so much money. And that's true. That's true. Ransomware is highly disruptive. The whole cybersecurity industry, we have seen people getting desensitized to data breaches because it's happened so frequently. And the only way for organizations, companies, businesses to feel the pain is when they are operationally disrupted. Their website stop running, they cannot take payment, they cannot have revenue. That's where the pain comes in. So now you have another wonderful opportunity in front of you. Is to become a ransomware gang leader. What are you waiting for? Let me know how it goes. I'll see you in jail. Take care.